Hey there folks, here's another rotation problem for us to try. There's this CD drive that we're going to boot up from rest, and we're given the amount of time that it takes for it to complete its second revolution. We need to figure out how long it takes for the first revolution to occur, and then figure out the value of the constant angular acceleration. It's a pretty straightforward problem, and doesn't really require a picture, so let's just jump straight into it. The first thing we need to consider is the total time that it takes for both revolutions. And here you can see it's just the sum of the individual times. Okay, that's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and rearrange this expression for the time that it takes for the first revolution alone. I'll plug in the time for the second revolution and then subtract that value on both sides. Now, we have no idea what the total time is, so we're going to have to resort to using a new equation from this chapter in order to figure that out. Here's the rotational analog of a kinematic equation that we've worked with many times. In this context, our linear displacement variable, which would normally be x or y, now becomes theta. Our linear velocity variable, v, now becomes omega. And our linear acceleration variable, a, now becomes alpha. And we're still working with the same type of quantities, but now it's all strictly rotational. And it's very useful that we can do this because now we don't have to derive a bunch of new equations to explain things that we're already familiar with. You just switch out the variables and that's it. Let's make an adjustment to this particular equation because we're not interested in any such time t, but rather we want a very specific time, which is t total. What's nice is that the problem description didn't mention any kind of initial angular displacement. And we were told that the CD drive starts from rest as well. So those first two terms can go straight in the garbage. They're equal to zero. We don't need them. All we're left with is just the single term at the end. So let's think about how to apply this. When the CD drive rotates through a full circle, it will have undergone an angular displacement of 2 pi radians. And since we're investigating the time it takes for both revolutions, well, that means that the angular displacement will be two full circles, right? So 2 times 2 pi radians, which we can simplify to 4 pi. At this point, let's solve for the total time by multiplying both sides by 2, dividing both sides by alpha, and then we'll take the square root of everything. We don't yet know the value of this angular acceleration, alpha, but that's okay. We can use some algebra to get that next. Let's go back to our time equation. I'm going to plug in the square root expression for the total time on the left, like this. And we can also do the same thing on the right hand side with this amount of time using the exact same process. Remember, for a single revolution, we said that the angular displacement will be two pi. So if you take 2 pi, multiply it by 2, divide it by alpha, and then take the square root, you would get this expression for the amount of time it would take for the first revolution to occur. We want the angular acceleration here. So let's switch the positions of this 0 0.750 seconds on the left with the square root of 4 pi over alpha on the right. Next, 
we can factor out the square root of pi over alpha from both terms on the left. And this is where you need to be careful. Notice that we have the square root of 8 minus the square root of 4, not the square root of 8 minus 4. Those two things are not the same, and you can test that using your calculator for proof. We're going to keep them separated so we don't run into any mathematically false statements. The square root of 4 inside the parentheses can be simplified to positive 2. And why do we choose the positive root? Well, otherwise, the amount of time it would take for the first revolution would be the square root of a negative number, and that's an imaginary number. And imaginary numbers don't represent anything physical in terms of time. So that is why we're choosing the positive root. So now let's square both sides and then multiply both sides by alpha and divide both sides by the square of 0 0.750 seconds. And now we have an expression for the angular acceleration and we can plug that into the time it takes for the first revolution to occur, which is this expression. And when we do that, the result isn't super pretty. So let's simplify it a little bit to make it easier to enter into the calculator. There's a pi in the numerator and a pi in the numerator of the denominator. So it's perfectly legal to cancel those out. Next, let's slide the square of the square root of 8 minus 2 into the numerator spot of the denominator, where the 1 is, like this. Since we're dividing 4 by a fraction, we can instead inverse that fraction and multiply it by the 4 like this. Now, this is a little easier to deal with, and we can plug it into the calculator. There's no more simplification required. I get approximately 1.81 seconds, and that is our answer to part A. For part B, we actually completed most of the work already. This was our expression for the angular acceleration, and all we have to do is just plug this into the calculator as well. I get approximately 3.83 radians per second squared as the answer to part B. Both parts are now complete and the problem is done. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a great day.